and Brad, the two most famous physical therapists on the internet. Hi folks, I'm Mike Keenan's physical therapist assistant. Brad Heineck, physical therapist. And together, we're the most famous Well, we physical... gotta stop there. Oh. <laughs> Bob's on vacation this week. Uh, Mike is filling in for Bob. We're happy to have him on here. He's part of the Bob and Brad crew, and he is a physical therapist assistant. And he's worked with Bob and I for, I'm thinking almost 10 years, but you're thinking eight or nine. It's been um, like eight or nine. Yeah. yeah. But anyways, we, we know each other. We know how each other work. It's uh, we're happy to have him fill in. Uh, so today's title is going to be running injuries, correct technique and tips to avoid injuries. We're going to help you and show you ways so you can run pain-free longer, faster, whether you're beginner or advanced. But before we got any farther, check us out on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok for 60 second versions of our program. You can go to bobandbrad.com and check away the giveaway section for this week's giveaway or be pinned to the top of our Facebook. And the giveaway is the knee glide. The knee glide. This is a really nice device. If you have a knee injury or surgery or arthritic knee, it works great for after surgeries. Uh, we love them, they work out very well. So that's our giveaway. Okay, so again, as I mentioned, running injuries. Uh, I've been running for over 30 years, and you've got how many years under your belt? I've been probably running for 15 years on and off. There you go. Uh, we both run, se I, I would say personally, semi competitively, 5Ks, 5, 10Ks, half marathons. I did one marathon, and you've done multiple. I've done three full marathons in the past. I'm training for a half right now. Right. So, so we're going to use our experience uh, as physical therapists, as uh, runners uh, over the long time, as well as some research. Now, two books that I've personally read, uh, Bob and I have read, both read these books. Mike hasn't, but they're really good if you want to reduce your injuries and correct your form or improve your form. Uh, the first one is Born to Run. It's by Christopher McDougall. It talks about long distance running, four foot running. Uh, it's a really enjoyable read. I liked it a lot. Gave me a lot of motivation and technical advice. Next book, number two, is The Pose Method of Running. Uh, this is written by a PhD, Dr. Nicholas Romanovs. Very technical book, a lot of really good information, a lot of drills and exercises and uh, biomechanical uh, advice and uh, support for why uh, running, particularly forefoot running, is going to help you out. Uh, it switched me over from a heel striker to a forefoot. We're going to get into that in a little bit. Uh, so... Yes, I have gone to a oh. seminar on four foot running in the past. I have tried it. It's fine. I like to do it more if I'm doing trail running like grass or stuff. Sure. But it's definitely something you have to get acclimated to. And it's a totally different running mechanism than heel striking. I'm more of a midfoot slash heel striker right now. Right. But it's definitely I'm less of a heel striker than I used to be after going to the seminar. Sure. But Good. We're going to. Get on that again a little bit more. Right now I want to talk about if you're going to go run, uh, I do advise a brief warm-up. I, I personally do not do a lengthy warm-up. And there's a controversy whether you need to warm up at all. Yeah. If you're going to go out and do a sprint or an aggressive start, for sure, there's need to be a warm-up. If you're just going to start out slow, I like to start walking, pick up my walking speed as part of my warm-up, and then I'll get into my jog and progress speed as I tolerate. Um, can Mike, also, what would you do? You can also do some body weight exercises real quick just to get your heart rate elevated. Because right now I'm trying to run a little quicker tempo starting. So that first mile is a little rough when you go from a resting heart rate of in the 60s to running heart rate at 150. Like it's quite a jump. Right. So just get your body temperature warmed up. You mm -hmm. can just do some ballistic stretching. You can do some jumping jacks, push ups, whatever, body weight squats if you want. Ballistic stretching? Static. Ballistic, yeah. Okay, static. Static. That's what I call it. See, we're different generations. We talk differently. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do want to talk about stretching. Uh, again, stretching, I've, some people say you don't need to stretch prior. I like to stretch. I think there's three muscle groups uh, that, if you're interested in stretching, I think should be the primary muscle groups that you should stretch if you're going to. Number one is the calf muscles. Uh, they're working awfully hard. I think by far 
an incline board is the best way to stretch your calves. If you're going to be doing a lot of running, uh, it's nice to have one. Um, this one I made, I had the lumber laying around, some one by sixes and a uh, top, and you know, you can make it right cheaply if you're handy and you have some tools. If not, you can buy them for, I I'm not sure the price, 15 to $20, but this really is a good way to stretch the calf muscles. You get the soleus and the gastroc. Um, you can simply forget that and go to a wall and do the wall stretch, and it works well too. Not as well as the other one, but it works good enough for running. Um, I have one of these right by my door. When I walk out of the door, I just simply do some stretching, uh, obviously on both legs. And then the hamstring, if you're a runner, you got fairly good balance. I personally like to get on a chair. This is a little bit uh, low for me, actually. You can also do it on steps. Yep. Yeah. I would go up to here. I'm I, pretty, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> some people don't have this flexible of hamstrings. I do, and there's less work for me. So get a level that's comfortable for you. Keep your back straight and stretch. You can go 30 seconds times three or on off five to 10 reps. I prefer the on off myself. And then hip flexion. Uh, this is probably the easiest hip flexion. Don't do it on a hard surface. You'll hurt your knee. Grass or carpet and good posture. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on these stretches, uh, but just so you see the ones I really think are the primary ones. I do not do the hip stretch flex before I run. I do the other two. I do this one uh, in another part of my exercise week. Yeah, I actually don't stretch a whole lot before, more after. Every morning, though, before I run, or every morning, I actually use the foot massager to warm my feet up. Oh, you do? It's usually they're a little achy, yeah. So who, I, who massages your feet? The, the, the Shiatsu foot massager. Male or female? <laughs> oh, you mean the a machine. machine. Oh, okay. There you go. Uh, or yeah. the massage gun I'll use, too, on my calves to kind of oh, dig in. That's but a good idea. That's what I like to do. It just gets circulation in your feet going. Because when I wake up in the morning, my feet are a little achy. Sure. You know? They're just stiff and sore. Yep. yep. That's yep. what I do every time before I go running. It's great. Once you start running, uh, this is – I was taught this by coaches uh, over the years, and I just held on to it, is learn to relax when you run. If you relax, your energy goes to the muscles as needed. One thing that helped me is one of my coaches in cross country said, keep your fingertips touching like this, very gently. Not a fist, nothing tight in your hands. If you've got a fist, you may have tightened muscles. You're not even aware of it. So you have to have a lot of awareness. Yeah. Uh, I, some people run tight and I, I'm not aware of it. I actually run with fists, but I don't like have a tight fist. They're just like a loose fist. Yep. But I never really thought about it. I just thought it was awkward running with my hands open. Sure. So I just, I used to also hold like an iPod back in the day uh, or my phone before I got a flip belt, which Brad's actually wearing to hold my phone for my music. So I like to run with music. But yeah, I, I guess that kind of fist. I've tried to run with a phone for my timer, and it just throws me all off because you yeah, have to hold it. Your muscles are tight here. Yeah. I'm completely not relaxed. You so. put the flip belt on or you get a Yeah, the flip belt. Yeah, that's GPS a good option. GPS watch. Yeah. Yeah. This is what I use. Exactly. But. Um, also, I check my jaw muscles. If my jaw muscles are tight, and a lot of times you're not even aware of it, everything is going to be tight up here. Once your face is tight, it goes down into your hands, your lungs, or your shoulders and your lungs. So if these muscles are loose, every other thing else seems to be loose with me. Relaxed breathing, relaxed upper body. Let the energy go to those hips and the legs to keep you moving forward. I actually run with gum. Chew gum? Yeah. Oh, wow. Keeps my, keeps my saliva glands oh. going and it doesn't get me dry mouth. Yeah. So I'm going on a long, like, 10-mile run and it's hot out. I don't have water breaks. Yeah. I don't really need them for 10 miles, so I just chew gum to get that saliva going in my mouth. You run 10 miles without water? Yeah. Wow. You must be like a camel. My wife is I, like The that. most I've done is 15, and it was pretty rough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hydration is, is very it, it's critical. A, I, I super hydrated before it and had a right. bunch of electrolytes. It was right. kind of on purpose to see what I can do. Especially but. in hot weather. You really yeah. need to hydrate before uh, and during the run if you're running any longer. Just go, go early in the morning. That's what I've been yeah. doing. I don't run long distances anymore, so I don't have that issue. Um, I do want to touch posture. Yeah. Just want to say the biggest mistake that we see with people's running is forward posture and not being aware of it. It takes a lot of energy when you're forward. You cannot breathe as well. Your diaphragm is stuck in there against your visceral organs. So you got to get up so you can breathe better, shoulders back. There's a couple um, instances where this is not true is if you're running up a hill, you obviously need to run forward, run into that hill, climb the hill, 
one of my coaches taught me that, and I can keep it with me today. Um, the next thing is, what was the next thing, Mike? I was going to talk about, oh, if you're a four-foot runner. Yeah, then you lean forward. Slightly lean forward, but it's not enough to really uh, know. But there is a slight forward posture with that. Yeah, four-foot running is different. You're kind of falling into the step. As I would say, from what I watched in yep, the seminar, that's what they'll talk about in the books I mentioned. You feel like you're falling forward, forward so your feet leaning. have to keep up with you. It's a subtle fall. It's not like boom. Yeah, you're... you just feel a little bit that way. It's like you're pulling yourself forward. It is really a nice, nice experience once I figured it out. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is the heel strike. I was a heel striker for at least twenty years. Land on my heel, roll through. That's the way I was taught in high school back in the 70s. You got to roll through. Got very much used to it. Uh, and then I decided because I've got spondylolisthesis, I want to save my back for the long haul. I'm going to become a four-foot runner. It took me about two years to break the habit so I could do it. And now I can run without thinking about it. However, it took a while and a lot of calf strengthening yeah. that first year because all of a sudden that, that impact, instead of going through your joints, your calf absorbs it like a shock absorber. And it takes it out on it, so you got to build it up. So uh, the shoes I used to wear, I'd always buy a cushion shoe, which this is, I wouldn't run with this shoe, but uh, more of a cushion in here. I would take an insert and take the factory insert out, put a cushioned insert in, and then it would, I'd have cushion. I always felt better. Uh, when I, as a forefoot runner, I get minimalist shoes and I run on my forefoot. And these are thick compared to my old pair. Um, but very little support is needed because you're running on your forefoot. Uh, it's a nice advantage, I yeah. think. They're lighter. And what do you do? What do you use, Mike? All right, so I have the Saucony Endorphin Speed. They have the rolling heel technology compared to a standard shoe, as you can see here. So it kind of propels you forward if you do land more on your heel. It's definitely different when I first bought them, I noticed. Like, my feet kind of had to get used to them. But I enjoy them now. They're pretty thick. Uh, they are a little flexible. But I like these ones. They're definitely, I mean, if you want good shoes, you have to buy what terrain you're going to train on. Sure. So if you're going to do more cross-country running or if you're going to do road running or you're going to do trail running, you need the different grips and the shoes are completely designed differently. And like these are $160. Sure. So a good pair of shoes are not cheap, but they're well worth the investment. So what, uh, what other shoes have you used? New Balance? I used to use New Balance, Asics. Those were my two big ones when I yeah. was a heel striker. Uh, but that was years ago, and they change. They never keep the same shoe no. from season to season. Yeah, they, they always, always change. change in color, and it's like you get one you like, and then the next year you get the yeah. same name, and they change it a little bit. Yeah, I've used New that's Balance. That's a frustration. New Balance, Sauconies are these. I've had A6 as well. I like them all. They all make good shoes, I'd yeah. say. I There's a brand called Hoka that's out there now, too. They're a little newer, a lot thicker. That's more for the high-mileage runners, Yeah, like the ultra keep runners. Keep the cushion protect the joints in the back. Yeah. Um, so spend time with your shoes. It's, it is uh, one thing you do need to spend some time in the store, try on a number of different shoes, get one that feels good for you, that matches your running style. Uh, and last but not least is find a running buddy, our support group. There's going to be days you don't feel like running and you got a, your goal to achieve so many miles per week or you got a race or an event coming up you want to prepare for. Always more fun, always helps to have someone to cheer you on. Uh, you're supposed to meet someone at 6 o'clock a.m. before work. A lot of times I won't do it unless there's someone there I have to meet. Then I'm going to be there, and then you're happy you're done. So find some support, a buddy, carry on at that road. Anything you got, Mike? Um, oh, you've got my, digital. My support buddy is through my <laughs> Apple Watch here because he has an Apple Watch. So whenever we work out, we each see what the other person worked out. It gets sent to our watches. So I know if he did his runs for the day or if I did mine. Without even being there. Yeah, he lives two and a half hours wow. away from me. So he's kind of seeing me run, so he's running now. He actually hasn't done distance running before wow, this. Well, that's kind of weird for me. <laughs> I, I kind of like it in a way, but it's a, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's going to take me a while to get into that, but I, I, I will. So I'll work on that for next year. These are super nice too, because they can see your pacing, like yeah. how fast you're running. Yeah. Super handy just to look at your wrist real quick, then look at your phone. I but. definitely, I definitely will consider that. Yeah. But then I'd have to find a buddy that also has one of those. <laughs> and that would be hard, because at my age, a lot of them, you know, 
Anyways, that's another story. I'll add you to my list. Yeah. People are dropping off. <laughs> oh, okay. They're all pretty much off the off the off this video by now, anyways. So enjoy. There's one thing we can fix just about anything except for a broken heart. But we're working on that. Does running help? Yes, it does. Yeah, it does strengthen. But your just heart. a little bit. You're yeah. not gonna fix it, you're just gonna help. We'll work on that. Yeah. That'll be another chapter in the book. Thanks for watching. Carry on.